Good afternoon, this is Chris Brecher with the Simpler Options free video. The weekend edition for February 22nd, 2016. Uh, right now it's about four minutes after the bell. Basically today was one of those consolidation days again. And let me show you what I mean by that. One is where the futures at a tight range. One time down about 1350, and this is about the high for the day, up 250, as you see here, about the high, uh, which you see right here. You had the NASDAQ up five all day. We were watching the Googles and the Amazons of the world just uh, hold up uh, along with Priceline. We had the Russell up four, so the Russell somewhat uh, outperformed in here. And uh, we had the NASDAQ, uh, the Nike down 155, and I'll get to that in a minute. We had the transports basically unchanged. So all day the transports really held up. Other thing to watch in here was oil. And one thing that I find really interesting in here is to watch oil down 92 cents, but watching the market hold up. But don't forget, yesterday the market went down when oil was up. So let me show you the relationships of all this and what I'm looking at. Number one, we have this overbought condition in the ESs. We have this doji back here, and I'm sorry, but think or swim recolored my dojis. So instead of it being like black and white, it's sort of this uh, red color. Sorry about that. But it's amazing that that major doji has acted again as resistance. So the key in here is we still have a squeeze setting up, which now makes a little more sense now that we're getting some tight range activity. We're getting overbought, but the key is next week. Are we going to get a little sell-off here and let this be the pause that refreshes so it has enough energy then for this to break out of this inverse head and shoulders? Or are we just going to roll right over? So I always look for tells in here. What are the tells? Number one, look at a 15-minute chart on the right of the ESs. And notice that this could be an upside flag, but it's also up against resistance. Now you see all the things I'm looking at in here. So you're like, well, how about the NASDAQ? Well, don't forget the NQs yesterday vastly underperformed the market. And I've been showing, if you want to link this, is how the ESs on the right had gotten up right to this level where the doji is while the NASDAQ was underperforming. It was like 100 points away. So it just makes sense that the NASDAQ would outperform somewhat. But as you see, both of them are in this dangerous condition of being overbought while they're both under this 49 EMA. So the whole key is how they work off their over, overbought condition next week. So then you're like, well, what are the tells? What might show which way these markets are going to turn? Well, let me give you some ideas in here. Number one, what I also wanted to show as I'm looking, and this is real time, the NASDAQ formed another doji today. So now you had a doji on some other indexes uh, yesterday and some banks yesterday, and today you have the doji on the NASDAQ. But getting it back to it in here, what would be the tells? Well, the first thing for me is what has been leading the market to the downside? So we're going to put the ESs on the left again, and I'm going to put crude oil on the right. As you can see, they don't always correlate whatsoever, but this time they did. Look at the doji back here on almost February 1st. And look at the doji in the ESs. And you see how similar they look. Look how the oil rallied right to the doji. ESs right to the doji. Both overbought right at the 49 EMA. So always the danger in this is to say, oh, short just because it's overbought. You have to have more reasons than that. But I... Uh, um, but just wanted to let you know about this with that's what I'm watching in here. Now the thing is, I call it the point of no return. If the crude oil gets to all the way down to here, there's a certain point where it is gonna affect the ES's uh, materially. But when it's in this area, as you see today, when it's sort of in this no person's land, selling off but down 88 cents, nothing drastic one way or the other, the ES's just don't seem to pay attention as much as they did. Now, if I would have told you yesterday that the ESs would be down all of two points with crude oil down like this and all the banks down and Deutsche Bank down, you would have said no way. So this is what I'm watching for next week. I see the ESs here on the left and I'm watching a lot of the stocks that I posted about dojis 
And I was watching Goldman Sachs, which did another doji today. See the doji right there? Then the follow through day and then the doji. The key is if this keeps going down, we're going to get pulled down on the ESs, which will then make this go down, which will make us probably squeeze to the downside. So just keep that in mind. On the other hand, if the market is able to levitate in this area, work off some of this, even while banks are going down, then if the banks turn, this could blow up and go up and break this and go up maybe to that 2000 level. So, so far you cannot tell one way or the other. And the way these work is you can wait. So that's the way I do it is I just wait and wait for my pitch. Are there other things I'm watching here? Of course. Let me show you the Dow Jones transports. So you see on a daily chart, way overbought, but trying to consolidate above the 4090 MA. I think this is going to be a big theme next week. Let me show you this on a weekly. And let me show you the transports. I'm going to link them so you can see them. And look at it on a daily. Now the transports were the first one that looked like they were a bear flag and just kept going up and invalidated the bear flag. Now you have this where it's trying to get back above the zero line and getting to resistance. The key, if this starts really selling off and hooking back down, I think the ESs will have another leg down. Other thing in here is to look at the ESs on a weekly. And as you see on here, we're still in this area where it's trying to form right under its, its trend line. And so I'm very interested to see if this starts hooking down on the right and then this just is a oversold rally and we go down to test the lows. So like I said, I cannot tell yet. When I figure it out, I post on the Simpler Stocks Premium, but it's sort of in no person's land here. The other things I'm gonna be watching next week are more dojis. Check out this doji in Cigna and it worked beautifully. A lot of people emailed me to tell me they made a lot of money on it. Basically Cigna had a doji yesterday and then sold off about two points. Now, I don't know what it did by the end of the day. But I know there were a lot of people that shorted it right here and made two points. So um, I didn't do it, but I pointed out the doji. And that's the beauty of simpler stocks. I don't show specific stock recommendations. I show ideas, but I show things like Cigna having a doji. Let me just show you another one that I showed three days ago. I showed UAL and said on a daily and a 78, it was looking pretty darn good. I was showing this pattern right here, saying if it broke 48, it could get going. There's no resistance. Look where it went today, 55 at one time. So that was a good one. It was seven points this week. The whole idea is I'm not telling you exactly when to get in, but I'm showing you the chart and the setup, and it's pretty cut dry where to buy it. So I hope that helps. Like I said, I post a lot of charts. We, uh, I'll be posting a lot over the weekend for the premium edition. And I will also be on for the hour in the chat Monday morning. We'll be going over the strategies, which is now getting attended by hundreds and hundreds of people, that one hour chat. And that's included in your membership. Even in your trial membership, that's included. So I hope you can join us. Everybody have a great week.